I am Shadow Android, the ultimate battle life form created by Eggman. You may have created me, Doctor, but I will now lead this empire and androids will rule! This is who I am! Eggman, target acquired. Locked and loaded. Fire! What? Goodbye, Doctor! Can Sonic movies make Shadow the Hedgehog look cool? Well, before I talk about that, let's talk about Sonic the Movie 2. So, this is a spoiler-free review. So, the important part is that this is a story about Sonic growing up. For a long time, I've thought of Sonic as more of a adult figure. But... Rightly so, the director has decided to try to connect him to the audience more by making him into a child um, in terms of how he wants to achieve his goal of being a hero and what kind of hero he wants to be. So this whole story is about him learning to work together and not be too rash in his actions. Though, of course, he's Sonic, so he'll always be rash to some extent, of course. But when Knuckles enters the story, thanks to Robotnik, Knuckles is somebody who can at least kind of compete with Sonic. And I think their dynamic is very good in how Sonic can't be too much of a straightforward knucklehead. <laughs> Excuse my pun, but like Sonic didn't really have to strategize ever in the first movie um, Here he has to at least Think a little bit outside the box compared to before for sure and Unfortunately, you'd think that that would mean that Tails is gonna help in this regard But generally Tails doesn't actually plan things very much I don't think Tails was portrayed as a very smart individual throughout the story He was mostly somebody for Sonic to either protect or just learn to be friends with because he doesn't have any friends, quote unquote, his own age. And I'm interested in where they're going to take Tails' personality and capabilities in the future, but for now he's just kind of... Imagine him as a five-year-old who is using his parents' technology <laughs> to make himself look smarter than he really is. So by the end of the story, Sonic and knuckles and tails end up working together i know i'm skipping to the end but not much happens in the story it's mostly just sonic and tails just trying to look for the chaos emerald um, trying to figure out the lore of the story which is perfectly fine in my opinion it's an adventure it's not as much of a video game adventure i don't know how to describe it because there's a lot of real world people that they have to interact with. There's a dance number that's kind of weirdly cringe. Like it's kind of good, but like also like what? Who even thinks of this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then you have the actual purely live action people doing their own thing. And it was awful at first. It was awful at first. However, I think it got better. By the end of that su side story, I think it it meshed into the story really well, in general. I don't want to spoil that part for sure. <laughs> uh, but let's just say, like, any questions that you might have had in the first movie definitely get addressed here. Um, in, a, in a general sense. I mean, I'm not saying everything gets addressed. Just, like, the basics of the threat level that happened in the first movie does have some consequences. So then, by the end of the movie, when Robotnik inevitably just throws Knuckles aside once he gets what he wants, um, I thought it was pretty good how Knuckles is seen as basically the same as Sonic, and how the, they are both trying to achieve their goal in a straightforward way as the last of their species but they've never actually had to interact with somebody that was as powerful as each other. So they're kind of just 
two big egos that are working together. So throughout the movie, I think that Sonic and Knuckles end up having some good confrontations and Robotnik is just at his A game. Jim Carrey's actually good in this movie. People really overstated his acting in the first movie. I didn't really understand what people were talking about. Like, he's quirky, but that was about it as far as I was concerned. Um, but people were making him out to be like completely, perfectly Robotnik in every way in the first movie. And I'm like, you're crazy. He's not crazy enough. He needs to be completely unhinged with actually creative robot designs and like a, a good style, but he was mostly wearing black the whole movie. He just kind of ended up feeling like EB, evil CEO and that's it. However, this is the movie where they knew what they were doing. They introduced his obsession with Sonic, which I mean, un admittedly that you couldn't have before, but he's completely obsessed with Sonic. He's completely unhinged in the sequel. He's coming up with actually good ideas and he just generally has grander ambitions than just world domination. It's about the way he wants to achieve world domination. It's There's a difference between I want to create robots and control the world through force versus I want to use these magic rocks to create Eggman land and destroy all these animal-like creatures that are getting in my way and what's that about world militaries? I don't care. They don't mean anything to me. <laughs> There's a big difference there and that's how he's like in the games. He never really seriously thinks that the world governments are a threat to him. It's always these bizarre creatures that are the only thing that matter to his plans succeeding or not succeeding. There's a sense of presentation and creativity that makes Eggman wacky. And it was completely absent in the first film, and it's just there in the second one. That's all there is to it. Can't wait to see more Eggman. For sure. Eggman or Robotnik, I don't care either way. <laughs> um, and so... Once everybody's working together, I was hoping for it to be a little more bombastic, but what we got was just perfectly fine. The final fight was pretty solid. Um, not what I'd want to be done with the Master Emeralds, but admittedly, there's not that many things you can do based on the lore that we know, I think. So I'm perfectly content with what they did. Um, I do think it was really funny when... Sonic allowed Eggman to die like seemingly Sonic is perfectly fine with murder I'm wondering if that's going to be brought up in the third movie because he just straight up lets Eggman die I don't know what more to say it's just it's kind of crazy when that happened I was like whoa okay um cool <laughs> um you actually surprised me, movie. Like, I was totally expecting him to go and grab him and save him, but no. Okay, cool. Nice. So then, yeah, the movie ends with um, everybody being friends and Sonic kind of learning that he's a kid, but he's growing up and uh, he's going to have to enjoy himself as a kid, but also grow up if he wants to get what he wants out of the world i suppose like obviously he wants to be free and you know he wants to do what he wants but also he wants to be a hero and you can't completely be a kid if you want to be a hero because you have to be responsible for things that happen like in one of the video games eggman was about to kind of nuke a city um while sonic would stop that I also feel like Sonic would not feel urgency to stop it. <laughs> like, he would definitely be trying to stop it, but, like, he'd probably screw around for five or ten, ten seconds here and there, and it's like, you really shouldn't be doing that when a, a city's about to be nuked, basically. Um, 
you know, in the video game, Sonic is always a Superman-like hero, basically, or the Flash, just trying to save everybody, and that's it. So he wasn't actually much of a kid in the video games. So I, even though it's really basic, I actually give him credit that treating Sonic like a kid was a good idea. Now for the ultra spoiler time. Ultra, ultra spoiler, spoilers. Ultra spoilers. So, post credits. Robotnik is alive because we see his side quick kick alive and it's pretty clear that Robotnik's alive. Uh, oh, they couldn't find his body either. But more importantly, the general of the troops tells us that the Shadow Project, Shadow the Hedgehog, is going to be in the third game, which is really interesting. So when the military, aka Gun, aka G-U-N, shows up, stuff kind of got real there for a second. <laughs> like, I was like, there's no way they're going to have real guns. Immediately, I was like, there's no way they're going to... There's gonna fire. There's no way they're gonna fire a bullet. But even then, I don't think that they're gonna have bullets in the guns. And to be fair, like the second that they showed up, they actually revealed that they have tasers only. But even after that, like yeah, we never saw them shoot a bullet. And it was like yeah, <laughs> you kidding me? With the way politics are right now, there's no way they're gonna be shooting a gun at Sonic, even if he's like immune to the bullets. Um, so I was actually fine with electricity. It makes sense that Sonic would get at least temporarily knocked out by the electricity. Um, makes sense he'd get shot because he didn't know it was coming. Um, that whole end to the subplot uh, with the marriage was perfect. I don't know why people have a big issue with the live action portions of the movie when it fits so perfectly. And it's not even like it was forced. It all made sense. It wouldn't have been connected to the plot. But it makes sense that eventually, sooner or later, Sonic would go back to um, his hu human companion. Honestly, I'm not going to bother remembering his name because um, I'm hoping he's not in the third movie. Even even though this was really good, I just don't see how you could do a good plot in the third one with the human characters. Um, even if you could, I just don't want it. <laughs> I just don't want it. Like even in the cartoons that I've seen here and there, the human plots just are so uninteresting don't really get it. It, it it seems like it's just to have people for sonic to save which at least in this movie they didn't do that like these aren't just damsels in distress if anything they're there to save sonic because sonic doesn't have enough backup to help him so yeah gun shows up and every, everything with the wedding is good um it's it's a bit cheesy there when uh they end up having the women go and have to save Sonic and uh, and there's a sequence where the bride is driving the golf cart or whatever the heck it was or they or four wheeler or whatever and she crashes it and explodes and she it's all like ooh it's so badass but it's like this is cringe <laughs> this is just somebody thought this was the coolest thing ever and no it's it's cringe it was cool in a way but more cringe than anything else <laughs> but still uh, don't mind too much. Back to Gun. Um, they were made a mockery of, but I like that they are there because by having them there, it's like, okay, so they should be directly involved in Shadow's story, which is pretty surprising considering Shadow's story is... I, well, I guess I won't spoil it just in case. I mean, some people... Are more familiar with Shadow's story than others. Shadow the Hedgehog is like one of my favorite characters because of how edgy he is. Um, he, the Sonic characters aren't supposed to be taken seriously. They're supposed to be in a fantasy world. So when Shadow the Hedgehog shows up and his tragic backstory revolves around the death of a child, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's like actually emotional and like when you get the whole story just all together I think it works really good um, it's been adapted in like uh, cartoons manga video game I think 
I think Shadow's backstory hasn't changed much at all in all these years, which I think tells you just how good the quality of the storytelling is. Now, I don't think that you're going to see a child death in Sonic the Movie 3. I just don't see it coming. I don't just know. Um, but that's why I'm like so annoyed. It's like, uh, it's cool that you bring Shadow, but is it going to actually be effective? I mean, and then on top of that, I don't want to see Shadow taken out by some tasers. Like, okay, see him beat up a whole bunch of gun troops. Cool. But like... Oh, he's gonna get shot by a taser and that might slow him down? I don't like that. <laughs> so, it depends where we go with the story, because Shadow's main story is Sonic Adventure 2, which is where Sonic is framed for actions that Shadow does. And while it's definitely forced in the video game, I think that that could be done really well in the. Um, in the movie by just making Shadow more of a pawn of Robotnik. Like, Robotnik actually manipulates Shadow into purposefully acting like he was Sonic. Like, you know, literally puts him into, like, a fucking blue suit. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No, that's true. Shadow wouldn't let that happen. But I'm sure that, like, maybe, maybe uh, Robotnik puts a hologram overlaying on top of Shadow and it makes it look like Sonic. I could believe it. Um, that sounds like a Robotnik plot. It's funny that that was actually just a coincidence, <laughs> if anything, um, in the original game. They were just like, Black Hedgehog, close enough to Sonic. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's a lot of sequences that we could get that are really cool in Sonic Adventure 2. I don't know if we're going to do that story, because like I said, um, the death of a child is really hard to put in the movie, and I'm not sure how you would replace that. I suppose you could just end up having it so that she gets shot by a taser and that puts her in a coma. And so this whole plot will be a very uh, Mr. Freeze situation in which Shadow is doing everything in order to revive his wife, friend. And uh, so... It's old, you know, that, that's a good redemption in that way. And he's still an edgy guy. <laughs> you know, he still does everything in the edgiest way possible. Um, he doesn't really need to kill anybody. I mean, I do like the idea of him picking up a gun and shooting people. I mean, if he does it with a taser, I suppose that's fine. It's definitely lacking impact. But, um, you know, I, I think that that can be... Um, a... Sorry for the thunder. I think that can be overcome by just making it so that you have Shadow drive a motorcycle for no reason. Hey Shadow, why are you driving a motorcycle? You're faster than a motorcycle. Why would you do that? It's cool, man. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole explanation. It's cool. It's like, okay. <laughs> that that's Shadow is literally the rule of cool. He's the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the video game world. Think about that one. <laughs> he's never, as far as I can think, he's never done something that's too over the top, too ridiculous. It's just what Shadow does. He's just that type of character that he can just make anything work, <laughs> even if it's ridiculous. And this also makes me think, if we do the Shadow Adventure 2 story, are we going to have Rouge the Bat? Are we going to have E101 Gamma or whatever, Omega or whatever, the robot? <laughs> um, you know, are we going to have them? Um, I don't think we need the Eggman robot, though it could be fine. You could probably fit that into the story, though there could be a lot of characters. That's the thing. It's a lot of characters to introduce. Rouge is definitely necessary, I feel. She's a very good character if done the way she was in the games. Unfortunately, I think that they're going to call that sexist and do some dumb stuff with her. Um, just make her into Black Widow or something. Like, She's better than Black Widow. <laughs> she's more sassy than Black Widow and has more capabilities than Black Widow considering she can fly, throw bombs, uh, and she's pretty fast. 
we don't need any like tension between her and Knuckles. I guess it's fine if it's there. <laughs> Whatever, sure. Everybody gets a rival, right? Um, oh yeah, that reminds me. That's right. He, uh, Gamma or Omega or whatever the robot. He wasn't in Adventure 2. For some reason, I thought he was. No, it was Robotnik. So it'd be more Robotnik versus Tails. Mm, it could work. You just have Tails be smarter, um, which he really should become smarter. Um, I just don't think that we're going to have the Robotnik uh, drivable leg thing same thing with tails i just don't see it happening <laughs> um i would i'd be fine with it but <laughs> i just don't see it happening and so yeah for characters i think it's a lot to put in um i i do think we'll go to space though <laughs> i'd be shocked if we don't go to the um space station that's all i'll leave it at um which makes me wonder, are we going to combine other stories of Shadow or other uh, Sonic stories? Because technically, the, the first movie was, I guess you could say it's like Sonic 1, but honestly, it's it has basically nothing really interesting, in my opinion, story-wise. But for the second one, it's kind of like a combination of Sonic 2, Sonic 3... And maybe Sonic Heroes, but not really. Uh, it's kind of weird that Eggman ended up not having as many robots, as much variety as he ended up having. Um, it was very much just Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and 3 from the Genesis. Um, and even then, I'd still say the second game was better. They went to space in that one. <laughs> even though it was just... Even though they just had him go to space, like, he went to space. And Casino, Casino Zone is really good in Sonic uh, the Hedgehog 2 video game. So they didn't have that or anything similar. So they really dropped the ball by having those live action sequences. Again, I like them, but when you remember that we could have had more Sonic sequences, that would have been better. Um, honestly, from a budget perspective, I noticed that the first and second movie made about the same amount of money. So I don't think we're getting rid of the live action stuff but they could just put more Eggman in honestly <laughs> I keep saying Eggman I want to say Robotnik I just hear Eggman way more in the games um but yeah I just want to see more Robotnik um and I just don't want to see what's his name I don't remember uh, Sonic's human friend I don't want to see him more at all so since the second movie had Sonic Adventure 2 and 3 I would say they'll combine Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and 3, Sonic Adventure 2, <laughs> sorry, just like, the, these are weird. Anyway, I think they'll combine Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Heroes. I think that's the best they could do. I don't even know if they'll do Heroes. But to be fair, I don't think we're about to fight a giant lizard. So, yeah. <laughs> there's not many other options. In fact, there's there's no other options. Um, oh, oh yeah, I guess you could say Sonic CD and Sonic Adventure 2. I just don't think that Sonic CD um, has that good of a story personally. Um, and the location is way too fantastical. It's even more fantastical than anything else, I'd say. Uh, in the whole series because like Sonic Adventure 2 kind of just occurs in the modern day the only fantastical element is the space station and that's it so I think it's just going to be mostly Sonic Adventure 2 um, you can't even combine it with Sonic Adventure 1 because that one has its own story and it's just completely <laughs> completely different oh yeah that reminds me yeah I don't think they'll have Amy I think Amy wouldn't be able to add enough to the story um yeah, I just don't think she would add that much. Uh, it, it'd be too clustered. Okay, here, here's, here would be the trade-off. Either you have Amy, but get rid of the human characters. Or you have the human characters and don't have Amy. That's, that's your choice. There's no other way to it. Uh, really no way, other way at all. Um, but for the girl de demographic, which, I mean, they definitely have to go for... Um, Rouge wouldn't be enough. She's not really a girl. She's more of a military agent, you know? <laughs> that's 
if you have one way to categorize a character in the Sonic franchise, it'd be that Shadow is cool, Sonic is fast, Tails can fly, but they also had to make him smart, so <laughs> because the flying wasn't good enough. Amy is a girl. I was gonna say annoying. <laughs> I was gonna say annoying, but it's like she's a girl. Rouge, I don't know other than she's deceptive. She's a kind of complex character in Sonic Adventure 2 with how her allegiances work and how she's not even against Shadow. She actually is kind of helping him. So that's where I'm I'm really interested in Rouge more than any Amy presence at all. And on further thought, I realize not only should the third movie have more animal characters, they need them to counterbalance Knuckles and Tails. Because at this point, Knuckles and Tails are kind of overpowered. Like, how will... Even with Shadow, how would Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails get overcome by Shadow? Even if Shadow's faster... I feel like between the three of them, they'd be able to take Shadow down. I suppose with Robotnik in there, it's a little more even. But again, there's not enough duplicity going on. Um, like, like I said, the second movie, they had the gun soldiers. They added a duplicity element, an unexpected element. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody. It was perfectly done. And, it did, and they did it in a way that made sense. It's like, yeah, we'll just go undercover and... And we're, oh yeah, we're, I like you and uh, we're going to have a marriage and yeah. <laughs> now, why did they do it in Hawaii? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. The Hawaii thing was weird, for sure. Uh, maybe it was just to make sure there wouldn't be too many people at the wedding, I guess. So the final thing I want to talk about is how Shadow looks like he has eyeliner. I don't know why they did this. So I was like, there's something going on. This can't just be a live action issue. So I went back and look at this crap. Just look at them side by side. I can't believe it. They just messed it up. That's it. <laughs> they just said, no, the original design wasn't good. We're going to do it this way. It's better. Well, just like the Sonic design, they'll have to fix it later. They gotta make him look as cool as possible. He ended up looking like a girl. It's so weird. I mean, I know that he has that eyeliner in the original version, but again, I think it's just the way his eyes usually are. He's almost, I think he basically never has his eyes shut, but even when they're shut, I think they look just fine. Um, it could be the shade of red, because there are some weird things with, Shadow de with Shadow's design that I've noticed everything since I was a kid, that his body looks like it's made of rubber. I mean, maybe all the characters have, have that issue a little bit, but I feel like Shadow more than the rest has kind of a rubber design when he's got the red fur or whatever, you know? It looks like fur, but not, not in the video game. In the video game, they don't act like these guys have fur, except for like a, a few of them, but for the most part, they don't have fur. They have slick skin textures. They're like penguins, all of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully they maybe make things more shiny looking for Shadow. I mean, just look at the original design. The problem is nobody's talking about it. I just wanted to mention it here. Shadow's design sucks. Uh, he needs to look cool. By not having fur. <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> or maybe just fix the fur. I mean, again, these eyes is the issue. The eyes are the issue. Um, but yeah, I am excited for the third movie. Uh, in two years or whatever the heck. And uh, I think they did a good job. I hope they think they made enough money though. Because like, yeah, it, I think it cost like $150 million to make. Something like that. And it made about $330 million. Which is fine, but I'm sure they're, they're like, that's not worth it. Meanwhile, we're going to have a Mario movie coming out this year or, or beginning of next year, I don't recall. And, I mean, I'm completely uninterested in it. But I'm just thinking, 
that it will be interesting to compare it to Sonic. Just wondering what kind of comparisons could be made. That's all. <laughs> Just wondering what kind of comparisons. That's why. That's where I'm interested in it, even though I wouldn't call that interest. It's just like a curiosity. So we'll see the Mario curiosity soon enough. And uh, then we'll get all the Mario Sonic comparison stuff. Um, thanks for watching. Support me on Patreon. Just watch the rest of my videos. I know this was a longer video than I was expecting to make. But thanks for watching it all the same. See you next time.